ever since that I've seen you before Over the fences, through backyards and into the fields Surrounded by moonlight and night frames Melodies rose, renaissance ruins and classical prose. Was it the moon shining soft in your eyes? Was it your breath on my shoulder? Or was it the wind? Now, I think everybody here knows that, uh, of course, we interviewed Tom prior to this. Um, but uh, you know, somebody failed to turn on the recorder, and uh, uh, anyway, so but we're gonna do we're gonna do better this time, right? So, <laughs> all right. Tom Gorman is a singer songwriter from Bowling Green, Ohio. Uh, he and I were a musical duo through high school and college, and uh, he's gone on to write I don't know tons of songs. Uh, when we were kids, he wrote songs and mostly I sang songs with him. And then I just thought, he's younger than me. I should be able to write songs too. So he was kind of an inspiration to me. I, uh, I really started working on, on songwriting, I think, as a, as a result of that collaboration. Um, so Tom, why don't you start by telling us about your musical journey, how you got started, um, and just kind of walk us through how what inspires you and that sort of thing. Well, it's nice to see everybody again. I, I, was, I was telling Tom, I really, I don't remember what we talked about last time, which is good. So I, if I'm repeating myself, that's be, it's not that it wasn't memorable. It's just, I'm at that age now, I think where the brain only holds so much information and <clears throat> it's a, it's like an old model, like, you know, four gigabytes versus the new brains that I think have more space. But um, no, I really talk, talk about inspiration. I remember seeing Tom Yackley play his guitar uh, when I was young and I thought, you know, I really would like to do that someday. And, 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 uh, um, and, and his mother was very instrumental in, in starting a music group at our church and we played five o'clock mass or four o'clock mass or whatever it was back in the back. They put us in the back of St. Peter's Church in Millersburg, Ohio. Any closer was a little threatening, I think, to people. So we played <laughs> uh, we played music. That's honestly how I learned. I think a lot of people of our generation learned how to play the guitar that way because at that same time, John Denver, James Taylor, Cat Stevens, they were all what we listened to on the radio and and so it just was sort of like this blend of uh learning your chords and how to change them fast enough in church and then <clears throat> and then play uh play music at coffee houses and in college and uh, that was the music so that's really where where it started i was a huge beatles fan <clears throat> when i was a kid and uh, there were a lot of singer songwriters at that time james taylor as i said elton john um uh, so just listening to a lot of that music. Uh, so I, I suppose if you could hear, and even today, probably you can hear those influences in, in, in what I write. And so I went to college and Tom and I played in a duo uh, in college at Holiday Inns and coffee houses on campus and dormitory parties. <clears throat> and then uh, Tom moved on and I stuck around at Bowling Green. I, I wrote for a little choral group at the university uh, that that sort of morphed into working at a church and working, writing psalmody. I worked just for what, whatever anybody wanted uh, to have written or hear sung. And uh, um, it just is amazing how much time passes quickly. I eventually got into writing music for the theater. There was a children's theater troupe at, at Bowling Green that traveled around a local school. So probably for 10 years, I wrote music for that. Um, and uh, things like Pinocchio and Winnie the Pooh and Peter Pan, things that really didn't need new music written because the old music was good. Uh, there's a setting of Christmas Carol 
Uh, there's a <clears throat> actually um, the the uh, playwright got a grant to write a a setting for uh, elementary and junior high students of the Faust legend, which was uh, an interesting thing to write for children. Um, <clears throat> so and and uh, played in a band, several bands. Uh, I had an, <clears throat> another duo where uh, uh, another Tom, another Tom, Tom Del Greco from. Uh, Hickory, North Carolina, and, and we put out a few CDs. And so uh, I've just been doing that all along and um, still try to keep my hand in writing. And uh, and I really appreciate the fact that this little song called The Last Song is something that you all have performed and performed quite well over the years. Um, that's a song I wrote in 1979, actually, which is <laughs> really a long time ago. And I think of, of what I would want, how old I was in 1979, <clears throat> if somebody talked about a song they wrote 41 years ago, it would have been somewhere in the, like the pre-World War II era. So, <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's in a nutshell, my musical pathway. I, I was professionally, I've stayed a professional musician until about 20 years ago when my children were of school age and I got a job at the university, Bowling Green State University, working in administration and and, uh, and that's where I still am. Tom, do you remember how old you were when you wrote your first song? Um, yes, I do actually. I think I was about 14 years old, maybe 13. And uh, I still have all those lyrics actually in a, in a box here. I used to, <clears throat> I think it was, you know, that youthful angst. I had all these pads of paper and I would just every night write, 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 write. And uh, I'm sure it would be very embarrassing to pull those out and look at them. You know, you don't realize, I think, when you're a kid and you develop some sort of hobby, that that's actually a discipline until much later. <laughs> you don't even know you're, you know, it's the furthest thing from being disciplined, but it actually is a discipline. So I still have all that, all that, all that stuff. I don't know why. I don't know uh, what I'm going to do with it, but it's still there. <laughs> well, some things you just can't part with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's. <laughs> True, it's probably some unhealthy attachment, but um, I just think I wouldn't really want anybody to find them and look at them. You know? <laughs> Be very embarrassing. Were your songs sort of like a, a diary? I think they, yeah, they probably were like an internal diary. I think they're a diary of a, of like emotions that you're going through, even if they weren't like diary of events. That's probably one of the things that makes um, the last song still relevant is that those emotions are things that come back year after year. I mean, it, Tom and I taught over 30 years and Thomas, you use that song every year? Not every year. Um, but I, I know that I, I would I would toss it out as a, a choice you know, let's look at these songs. I know when I started at East Canton, they had uh, a song that they had done traditionally at graduation and, and they wanted to do that song at graduation. And I was fine with that, you know, I wasn't gonna push this song onto any, anybody. Um, but uh, you know, once it kind of got established, it was like, they weren't gonna, I would put out multiple songs. Here's here are your choices for this year, and they would always choose the last song. And you it's meant just, for the Mr. Yackley, just, just just put those other songs away. And you meant for the end of the year. It's like an end of the year song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never gave them choices about any songs the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thomas, when uh, Tom Gorman, sorry, when you are when you were writing all your songs, you know, the last song, of course, was your original music and lyrics. And you've obviously written lots of songs that way. But do you find it harder to write music when you're taking someone else's text and having to set it as a composer than it is for you to just write out of your head, you know, your own words? Yeah, you know, I haven't done that that often with, with other words, but... Um... I, I, with the with the playwright, I found that uh, the, the, the it wasn't that you know 
it was not a difficult thing, but in your own brain, it tracks different than it does in your co-writer's brain. So I'd have to re you know, move the pieces around a little bit to get it to flow the, the way that I was hearing it. But I, you know, I haven't collaborated that much, um, but I, I, I have always enjoyed it. The, the, the Tom that I've sung with most recently, um, we somehow are on the same page musically and I'll go visit him and he'll be banging around on a chord pattern and maybe have three words and then we can we can kind of go with that it's a lot it's a lot different it's so that's much more like a of a hobby to to get together and just see what you can do in a short amount of time and the music probably shows <laughs> it's probably not as well thought out but yeah i don't i i i would actually probably really like to collaborate with someone who wanted to write lyrics at this point because i think that um i can't think of anything to to, to it, you wait for those things to come if i know that there's at least one poet here on the screen and and uh <laughs> you can you can not do anything for 18 months and then all of a sudden something happens you know where you're, you've got three weeks where some brain cells have locked together and things come out so when you were writing music for the children did they told you what they wanted you to write well he the the lyricist or the playwright would come over and we'd sit down and have the piano and he'd have something written out and we'd work on it together. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> Pinocchio's only got so many things he, he's gonna present <laughs> from his interior life, so, or Winnie the Pooh or whatever, but yes. When we did the Faust legend, that was a little more fun. That was a little more in depth. And he actually was a professor and he was on a sabbatical for a whole semester of work on that. So that, was, and mm -hmm. the other one we worked on a lot was a, a version of Christmas Carol. And, and some of those were, you know, I had more input into the lyrics to make them flow, flow more. Have you written any uh, compositions for uh, children's choirs recently? Not, not recently, no. And, um, and even those, the songs that, that were for the children's theater just kind of served the play. They did many of them don't stand alone. There's a few that, that, that do, that I actually will perform once in a while that, um, but uh, when I was younger and I worked in the church, I wrote some compositions for children to sing uh, psalms, psalmody. That feels like it was so long ago. Yeah. My ex wife there... had a children's choir, so we would do music with the children's choir. Ah, uh, okay. I was going to say, there you're generally using uh, words that are written already, although I'm sure that you probably do some elaborating putting it into your own syntax yeah with that... with, with the psalmody it was <clears throat> the the if anybody uh works in liturgical music at all there are approved texts and over the years uh th there are certain uh certain um, denominations that have gotten more serious about making sure you use the approved text so that became an exercise to try to write psalmody that actually was the approved uh, version of whatever psalm, uh, and they they would come out with versions that were poetic and 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 musical. But yeah, you had to, I for I forgot about that. That yeah, you had to follow the lyrics that they gave you. <laughs> Amazing that you wrote the chants. I we chant the psalm every week in my church service as well. I like. I like the chants. Yeah, I agree. I think that the Psalms are songs, right? Yeah. It seems strange to go and it'd be like reciting the Star Spangled Banner at the beginning of a basketball game, right? Yeah. <laughs> Instead of singing it. <laughs> Tom, did you grow up in a musical family? <clears throat> or if you didn't, uh, what was the greatest musical influence? on your life as a young person? And when did you realize that you had some ability or some talent? Well, um, my mother played the piano and my father did, a, he, he did a little bit, but her, my, my grandfather, before we started, uh, Tom and I were talking about it, he has a recording of his grandfather playing the piano. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my grandfather was a, had been a vaudeville musician and played this stride piano. And we never got a recording of it. I just wish we had, but he was, uh, 
he was a musician and my father's father was a musician. And uh, so, and my, my younger brother is an absolutely, you know, he's a PhD choral conductor. And so there's, there's musical genes somewhere in the family. And I, I really wasn't very good at other things, but I could sort of pick up music. So I think in, in high school, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. And, um, but I, uh, and I did, I majored free mus in music for a while in college, but that's where I, I, uh, I didn't have the discipline to finish uh, in music. It takes a lot. I think think it takes a lot to get that degree, and I was always sort of free freestyling and uh, too young, too immature to to finish that way. But you know, we had, we had this we had this thing in Mill this little town of Millersburg, where you know th this Yackley family, which is incredibly talented. Uh, we're up the street. And, and so, um, you know, I think a lot of musicians coalesced around that. I can think of other people in other families where that was sort of the, the point of coalescing a lot of people's musical ability. And, uh, and I think a lot of friends in high school, even if they weren't part of our church, would come sing with our church on holidays or, or uh, at Christmas time. And so that's where we all sort of, you know, Millersburg was not a cultural mecca. I don't think it was at the time, and uh, but but we found a place to do to do that. Brenda had a question. Um, yeah, going back to the writing your music, do you would you prefer to write the music and then have the lyrics written to your music, or do you prefer to have the lyrics and write your music to the lyrics? Well, I don't know if I have a preference. It's just sort of how they come out, you know? I mean, I used to write, write, write lyrics all the time, and then I'd go back and put music to them. But as I, and as the years went by, uh, they sort of, you know, melded together. Things will come into your head that, that have a melody. And, uh, and I think the, the longer you do anything, you know, what, whatever anybody's doing in their careers or in their passions or their hobbies, whether it's quilting or fishing or whatever, you, you develop this sort of synergy with the whole process. So, um, so uh, I don't think I don't think I any longer have a, a preference. I think when I when I wrote the last song, I vividly remember uh, writing the words to that because I had been at a party uh that my my our brothers both graduated in the same year from high school and i'm sure my brother bob and tom's brother dave and a number of other people were sitting around a campfire and i remember thinking they're never gonna they're never gonna see each other again so when you look up to the stars and lose your heart I'd been out of high school a couple of years and I remember writing those words, uh, sort of reacting to what, oh boy, you know, this is it for these guys. And, uh, and this is what they may be experiencing and what, what we're experiencing. So that back then it was the words and then the music and, uh, but yeah, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard to describe really. I mean, I, I know, like I said, I know that there's at least one poet. Are there other composers they, uh, among the group here? Poets, writers, novelists, okay. <laughs> Anything creative, uh, it comes, it, at least for me, it comes from a place that I don't really, uh, not sure where it is, you know. I don't think it is, actually, I don't think it's here. I think it's somewhere else it comes from. I know with Nicole, Nicole, speak to this. Uh, she has like months where she writes every single day. And then there are other months where she doesn't. So I don't really know if you feel motivated more during those months or if it's just a challenge. Um, well, it's like, like NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month where you're supposed to write a novel in a month. And instead of that, I just write a poem a night. Um, so for me, I think it's just about the discipline. Like Tom was saying, uh, you, you get into the habit of it and you get all the bad stuff out of the way. And then eventually you start to produce good things if you're doing it um, regularly. 
but you can't keep that up indefinitely. So hence the just a couple months. <laughs> so I do it. But uh, Tom, when you wrote the last song, didn't you write a verse later? Uh, could you talk about how why the later verse came to be? Well, that that's yeah. I wrote the first two verses, and then and then uh, then I saw my friends graduate from college, and uh, that's when the the bridge and the third verse came about. You know, it's a it's a. I think that song's a lot about connection and. Um, you know, not wanting, not wanting to let go, but having to let go. And, um, but I think it has a, a bit of hopefulness to it in terms of, you know, we really want to keep these connections and we, we don't want the circle to break. Uh, I think, I think the other thing in, in the cold about your poetry that the, what I've read is, is definitely informed by other, other stories, right? A, a literary stories and myth, myth mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that's another thing that, uh, you know, the last song I was reading a book at the time that was, um, it was about, it wasn't by C.S. Lewis, but it was about C.S. Lewis, who's the English novelist. And he's the one who said, uh, Christians, at the time I was very much into C.S. Lewis, never say goodbye. They say, we'll meet again. So that's where that, that line came from that thought that there is really no goodbye. And, and, you know, no matter what you believe, at least in my life, I always figure that, uh, that we want to have interactions with people where we think that way. We think we'll, that we, we will encounter this person again. I mean, how many times has that happened <laughs> where you've, you've been in a bad mood or something, or you've had a bad interaction with a teacher or a colleague, and then, you know, you run into them a week later in the grocery store or whatever, you know, we're all, we are all connected that way, I think. And if we can, if we thought about that, we will always run into one another again, uh, at some point, maybe we, you know, we temper our, our, uh, words and attitudes. You know, uh, Shelly was my student, uh, when she was in high school. And I'm sure at the time that she never thought that she would be one of our dearest friends many years later. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the kind of thing where, you know, these circles and Shelly, I don't know if you sang the last song with us at Tucker, but we did do that song at the end of some years. And I can't remember if it was one of your years or, or not. <laughs> I can't remember either. Um... I can't even remember the, the song we sang at graduation for baccalaureate, but it's a, it's an amazing, beautiful song, Tom Gorman. Um, and <laughs> it's I, just so you know, um, I like to listen to choral music when I'm exercising or walking or biking. And the best way to do that, to find really good recordings is to go look on YouTube. So if we are performing something as a chorus, I'll go and try to find a good recording if Tom or Robin haven't already provided it and it goes on a playlist. And, and that's what I listen to. And it's just exhilarating. And of course the last song is on my playlist um, because it's just lovely. And you know, this whole COVID environment has been so challenging in so many ways for us um, that when I listen to that song as, um, performed by my people, some of which are here, it, it's just an emotional connection every time I listen to it. So congratulations, your goal was very accomplished. <laughs> because <laughs> it, it really does keep us connected, I think. Um, and uh, so thanks for composing it. And Thomas Yackley, thanks for arranging it um, and having us perform it. It's, it's been a real blessing to my life and I would imagine others here as well. Um, but yeah, it, the you. circle does move around, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of curious, you know, you've, you've done a lot with your life when you look at uh, the children's theater and, and the church work you've done and you were in a band and you've done choral stuff and, um, just so many different accomplishments. Um, and your life has probably many, many more years left. I'm just curious as a musician, a composer, um, a thoughtful um, impact, if you will, human. Is there anything on your, your musical bucket list that you haven't done yet that you would like to accomplish moving forward? Well, um, 
I, yeah, I, I, I worry about articulating it, you know, <laughs> like, I don't want to, uh, but, you know, I, 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 I wrote some things when I was younger that were choral pieces and orchestral pieces that I would, I'd love to go back to those and see if I could, you know, finish them off and try to get them in, in production shape. So I, and the, and I think that's the other, the other thing I think about uh, is working more on, you know, I've been a, basically a songwriter for the last 25 or 30 years and haven't done any choral music but doing choral or, or instrumental pieces. But I, I think about, um, you know, my dad, who was a voracious reader and he was an English major in college. And, you know, growing up, he talked about having, you know, I'm gonna write the novel, I'm gonna write a book, I'm gonna, when I retire, I'm gonna do this. And and then he retired and, I, and I'm like, dad, you can write write the book now. And he goes, I don't, I don't think I have it in me. So I really worry about that. <laughs> I worry about getting that point. I look at, at, at uh, retired friends that I have and and one in particular time I look at his photography and the things that he's doing that are just really amazing and creative and we have another mutual friend who's doing that I think boy I, I hope I have the energy to do that kind of thing but those would be the things I think on my bucket list is to get back to you know God willing have the energy to get back to to being more invested in in writing and playing it's hard to, you know, the, I don't know. I see like the Rolling Stones and Paul McCartney and these guys are standing up there at the age of 75 for two and a half hours or three hours. And I'm thinking I could probably do like three songs and I need to sit down. So <laughs> You can do it. If heart can do it, you can definitely do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I never thought too much about that question. I just, you know, I'm at the end of my you know, I'm trying to trying to end my career in, in my in higher education uh, and, and feel like uh, uh, I have friends who say you need to retire to something rather than retire from something. But it's hard to not think about retiring from <laughs> on some days. But finding gotcha. that is really it's really important. Tom, did you when did you decide you were going to do photography? I don't know. I mean, I, I had done quite a bit of photography through the years, but uh, uh, I guess after or close to when I was getting ready to retire, I had some some other choral director friends who uh, dragged me along on a photo shoot and and I just had a blast. And uh, so I got a little more interested in it at that at that point. It seems to be a natural yeah. transition for choral directors to go into photography i don't know why but he knows quite a few of them that have uh, well I, I think there are a lot of similarities between directing a chorus and composing a photograph uh just in terms of of uh getting all the components to line up and and uh and that sort of thing but that's a topic for another day uh, <laughs> I have a question for you tom yaffe I thought that the instrumentation for the last song was just absolutely beautiful. And I wonder um, you. if you could talk to us a little bit about how, did you hear those particular instruments? Um, was there a reason you chose the ones you did because you heard them or were you, did you try others? And how did you figure out what, what worked so well with that song? That's a good question, thanks. Um, you know, um, we were talking about the, the two different iterations of Tom's song because I arranged the song before he added the bridge and the other verse. And then when he did that, I, uh, I thought, oh, okay, this, this is really awesome. I need to add this in too. Uh, <laughs> and, but really, instead of just adding it, I kind of started over and just rearranged the whole piece. Um, and it was for guitar and chorus. And it was only a few years later when I thought, you know, this really could use some strings. And maybe it was because my kids were playing string instruments by then. I don't know, but um, I added the strings later and uh, I just, I felt like that bass really just added quite a bit and, and, um, and honestly, the cello part I added because we had years when the tenors weren't very strong 
and to have the cello doubling the tenor <laughs> really uh, really helps with that. That was a, I think that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just went together so beautifully. Uh, well, thank you. Um, considering that the last song was written such a long time ago, and you mentioned that you have boxes of material uh, lyrics that you wrote in your much younger years, high school and uh, during that time, have you ever gone through that information, you know, gone back and looked through that and sort of mined through it to see if there's inspiration for something you could write now? Yeah, sure. Yes, I've done that. And I, and I've, and I've, you know, in, in the periods where I'm not writing anything and nothing's coming to me, I'll go back and rewrite some, you know, old things. Okay. So, I've wondered about that. If, if the, the way you, spoke of it it sounded like you know, oh boy i would never want to look at that again uh, well you know i just saw this comic and it's it's a, a little comic uh, drawing and it was some fellow standing with a a, a pile of papers and he, in behind him are a bunch of monkeys with typewriters <laughs> and and he's saying this is the great Gatsby. We were looking for Shakespeare. Have you ever heard that <laughs> that that joke that if you put enough monkeys together, they would accidentally write Hamlet or something like that? <laughs> this is the great Gatsby. So I always figure, you know, looking back through stuff, once in a while you see a line or two, and you think, okay, that that was okay. The rest of it, no. But uh, well, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have a? song of yours that you like to perform or is there one that you like that you wrote in particular yeah i do i have i have some that i really enjoy uh i you know i like singing this this last song i don't get to do it i don't get to do it very much because uh you know it's good for it's good for high school graduations the, the occasional funeral or family gathering and I don't play at those things any longer. So uh, it, when you're in a bar playing, people really aren't very much interested in in hearing it before <laughs> 2 a.m. I suppose. But um, so yeah, I have a few that I like that are, that are fun to play on the guitar that I like to play. And uh, it, it's the, the playing the guitar or any instrument I think is very therapeutic. So if it's uh, it is just therapeutic to to bang on something and 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 yell you know and sing out me too yeah <laughs> did your mom give you piano lessons no i i never i never took piano lessons um uh but you know we'd have music in the house and uh i think we had this ugly green piano that every time They'd paint the room. They'd paint the piano to match, which I, uh, I wish we, I wish I still had it actually. But um, yeah, so just having so, the music around. How did you learn to read music then? You know, I I think that um, I was in the choir and and then in the band played the trombone in the band and sang in the choir and um, that's how I learned to read music. Mm -hmm. It always surprises me when songwriters don't play the piano. To me, that just goes together. Well, I actually play it. I just never learned how to play it right. Okay. okay. <laughs> I never learned how to play it like, you know, you're supposed to, like Robin, like, you know, where your fingers are supposed to go. I, I wish I had, but I, I never did. So your main instrument is the guitar? It's, yeah, pretty much the guitar. Mm-hmm. Which I wish I had. I wish I had studied that as well, classically, but I didn't. It's not too think... late. <laughs> Who said that? Shelley. <laughs> I think. I think it's... for me, it, it may. I mean, I don't think it is too late. I just think I have. You know, over all these years, I've just sort of developed my own technique that. I think there would have, would have been a time when I could have, uh, not that I couldn't learn uh, some valuable things from that, but, you know, uh, I'd rather learn the piano or the, or the cello uh, than, than the guitar at this point. Well, you're quite accomplished on the guitar. You know, 
I have studied classical guitar, but I can't play the guitar nearly as well as you can. So I think there's there's some method to your madness on that. Um, I was going to ask you about uh, chord progressions, because uh, in the last song and really in quite a few of your songs, um, there are always surprising uh, chords. They're not just your typical uh, chords that you hear in in popular music, uh, but things that that are uh, a little more substantial than that. And uh, uh, I'm wondering, uh, does that just come naturally, or do you have to, you know, really focus on where am I going with this? How can I make this interesting? Or where does that come from? Well, that's nice of you to say. I don't. I don't really know. I think that um, it's probably the kind of music we listened to when we were young, and uh, uh, we we were in the High School Musical, so we heard Rodgers and Hammerstein and, and Gershwin and things like that. I think it's a combination. I think the you know I think the Beatles were really good at that, at throwing in surprising, uh, surprising things at at moments you didn't expect, but. Um, and then I learned a little bit of music theory in college, you know, just enough to sort of uh, make me not want to use just three chords for a song, you know. I, I always felt, and this is, uh, you know, this is something that, that uh, I remember uh, when I was playing with Tom in high school and college, when he would he would really be interested in a melody and how important melody was. and. And so I think melody is very important. And then you kind of hitch a chord onto the melody and it may not be the chord. The melody may be normal and regular and adjacent and easy to sing, but you throw the chord in that, uh, that isn't the, the chord you would have expected. So that's just kind of delight. That's the game. It's kind of a delightful thing to do. It's <laughs> It's kind of that's like Bob game. Ross, right? It's Bob Ross. You can put the tree wherever you want. The, do you want the tree over here? You put the tree, <laughs> tree over here. <clears throat> How about an E flat over here? Okay, you can do it. <laughs> hey, I have a question for both of you. Do you have a favorite key to write in? Hmm. Go ahead, Tom. Um, I think it's it's whatever key I'm able to sing the highest note in at the current moment. <laughs> so <clears throat> I think my, I have a lot of things that I wrote that are an E flat, and I think that's because that's about the highest note I can sing is an E flat, and and the, uh, it's a good it's a good guitar key if you put a capo on. Uh, Thank G, you. yeah. I don't know that I have one. I <laughs> well, I hadn't do, really thought about it before. How do you choose a key? I mean, I'm curious. How did do, how does a composer set out to choose the key? Uh, I know they have to if they're writing for SATB, they have to consider all the voices and the um, ranges. But I, I, I mean, we have all different keys that we sing in with uh, the chorus, and I'm just curious. I mean. It just goes from like seven sharps here to seven flats there to, you know, do you, you know what I mean? I mean, how does a composer yeah. choose? I wonder. Well, for me, I do have to think about, you know, the ranges of the voices and, you know, who can sing this. I know that there have been times when I've started a piece in one key and thought, okay, but what I want the sopranos to do this. And if I don't change the key, then, you know, that's not going to happen uh, or, you know, something like that. So you have to kind of work it to find uh, what works best with the, for, uh, for your forces. You know, too, Chris, a lot of times, uh, especially in the uh, world of selling music, people write music in keys that they think accompanists can play. Uh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. because I know that you know I'm always glad when somebody gives me a challenging set of notes to play but but I do remember as an early accompanist that everything was with you know one sharp one yeah. flat because <laughs> there were young accompanists that would be really thrown off by more oh. <laughs> you, 
Yeah, and so that I think that especially if they're selling music, they kind of look at it from that perspective. And sometimes that puts songs in the wrong place for people to sing too, you know? Good point. Yeah, I remember getting a lot of those books that were compilations of Broadway tunes or pop tunes or whatever, and this, we'd try to sing them and they would be in the totally wrong place to sing <laughs> because they had m removed all of the sharps or flats or something and they'd be too high or too low and you'd be thinking, why can't I sing this song? Yeah, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, some musicians or some composers feel like different keys have different moods. True. Um, but I'm not sure that's true as much for vocal music as it is for instrumental music. The th well, the thing that I wanted to try is, is there's some, I can't, I can't remember it right now, but you know how A440 is standard tuning. S some of you musicians may know this, that actually that's sort of a construct that A used to be like 434 or something. Have you ever heard this? Yeah. And that that's a more it's a more more in tune with the human psyche to that a440 is actually uh what the germans the german music wagner came up with and it's much more anxiety provoking apparently so i've, I've thought about fiddling with the tuning a little bit at, at some point to try to to try to find that but um hmm. and i but i agree with you i think it's definitely that's true is that there are things that resonate differently a guitar player uh how many guitar players are in the group here you, you may you, you ever use like a drop d tuning or an open d tuning or an open g tuning those definitely feel better or feel different i mean and uh, different and uh yeah that's very interesting what are some other considerations that you have to keep in mind besides key when you're writing for somebody other than yourself Um, wow, I don't know. I think that you probably have to consider their ability to, you know, sing the, the intervals and their, I mean, a, a trained singer can probably handle all sorts of things, but, um, I know when I was writing for, um, I, the, when I was writing for the children's theater, the, the students were not always singers. So and and also for for not not that you want to dumb down music for children, but I always felt like you wanted to write something that was accessible, and so therefore, uh, you you know if you're if you listen to Star this theme from Star Wars or Indiana Jones, they're all very there's a lot of adjacent notes and then a third and a fifth and a fourth and you know it's it's uh, so I think that's a consideration as well and those things everybody loves probably because they they have those very familiar intervals in them i mean the last song i i just i i think about that song and how i probably would have never written it after you know after, after i hit a certain point because i think that that chorus although it works it has that big jump in it da, 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 da. which uh, I had a friend in college used to sing that to the tune of The Entertainer by Scott Joplin because it's sort of the same. Da, 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 da. I hope that doesn't get <laughs> in your head. Uh, so it's a big, it's a big, it's a sixth, right? It's a, it's a big, it's a big jump. Right. Um, you know, late, later when I wrote for the church, you would never write something like that in a, in a certainly not in a Catholic church. Maybe you would in a Episcopal church where they're used to these big hymns and things like that but you know we wanted to write music that people could sing very easily and so that was very uh it was an inevitability of the melody and and notes were adjacent so that you could find you know the the beethoven's ninth that oh to joy melody is such a great melody because it it's very singable very stepwise it's kind of floats along like that you mentioned c.s lewis before um I like him a whole lot. And um, I just wondered, you know, as I get older, well, for a while now, because I've been this way for a while, I listen to words a lot more than I did when I was younger with music. And I concentrate more on words and the meaning of words. So I just, you know, found it interesting you mentioned him. And then 
I just wondered, do you use a lot of his different kind of works to get inspiration or is there, are there other people that you look for a look to for that? Or does it come just from you? No, I think Not just I, from you, but you know, whatever, whatever I happen to be digesting at the moment. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, <laughs> That that's with my the guy that I wrote songs with uh, the last few years. Um, as I mentioned, he I, I'd drive down to North Carolina. He'd play his guitar. Uh, we'd be so excited to see each other that you know he'd bang on the guitar and bang out a few things, and then he'd go take a nap, <laughs> and I would write the lyrics. And it usually was based on something that I'd been reading, you know, at the time. Yeah. So, um, and I I'm very I'm very interested in myth myth uh, the classical myths. And the stories they tell, and and um, and just sort of the the, the whole uh, idea of you know the Jungian stuff, this yeah. universal consciousness, and the the way those stories really play out in our lives. So very nice, thank you. I'm curious to know, Tom, what percentage of the music that you've written throughout the years has been stuff that you've performed for people uh, versus things that you just would never show to anybody because it didn't meet your standards for performance. <laughs> well, I have really low standards. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem was it wouldn't meet the standards of people that were listening to it. But I'd say that, you know, there's, there's probably, I don't know, 30 songs or 40 songs maybe that I would play if that uh, so yeah um, so a very low percentage I would say uh -huh. and so what would you guess would be the total sorry the things that I that mean a lot to me uh, they just don't go over well <laughs> you know if stuff <laughs> is too personal uh, then it, it's, it loses this appeal to anyone else uh, well, I know that you have always written things that were very personal. I mean, uh, we never really talked about it, but when you were writing songs and we were singing them together, I, I always knew, you know, what girl it was about. Uh, <laughs> well, that, yeah, that was, that's, that's the thing about being in college and playing the guitar, right? You were always. Absolutely. <laughs> I couldn't, when, afford, I couldn't afford a nice car, so that right. <laughs> when when Tom decided to write um, the last song as a choral arrangement, now you know Thomas. I don't know if you were just looking for something, or if you felt like that was just the perfect set of words or the perfect song for an end of the year. But at That's this point in time, Tom Gorman, do you have anything else in your repertoire that you think would make a good choral selection? Well, yeah, I, I do. Um, uh, I have I have choral pieces. They're 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 old, I, and some of the stuff I write, you know, I think I because I was sort of raised on choruses and singing choral music. I I think that way, and and so yeah, I do have things that I think would make good good choral pieces. Now the thing is, the the more the older I get, and I, the more I've sung in choirs, I think. They have to have a little bit more, you know. They have to have something a little more substantial. When you listen to some of the music that that choirs sing and what that you sing in your choirs, they, they there's a development to them, and uh, and you got to know what you're doing arranging. You know, you got to know your voice leading and uh, those types of things that, that I don't do. But yeah, I think a lot of times I think chorally in the music I record often I'll put a lot of vocal parts on. Mm -hmm. and counter, try to do counterpoint, those types of things. Just I, I if you... want to say I'm, I'm forever grateful that, that Tom arranged this song because, you know, what a nice thing. And it's, it's, it's nice to be able to, to chat with people about it. I'm, I'm really, really uh, just so grateful that, that, that it's still out there. You know? And, you know, it, it lives on beyond us. You know, it's it's gone with mm -hmm. our daughter, you know, all the way from Florida to California. And <laughs> there are former students that you've had, Thomas, that have asked to use it as well. Yeah, some of my former students and some of their former students. 
<laughs> Every once in a while, I'll get a note from someone who has found me uh, somehow, or they'll say, "Are you the guy that wrote this song?" And I want to use it. I want so yeah. So I, I that's solely from I think from you folks singing it and keeping it going. Mm. Well, I'm very very grateful for that. Yeah. Well, it's a great song. We're we're grateful for that. <laughs> So would you, you're, when the two of you collaborated in your earlier years, would you say your relationship was more like Simon and Garfunkel or was it more like Elton John and his, uh, his collaborator whose name escapes me right at the moment? Bernie Toppin. Bernie, yeah. yeah. Uh, Laurel and Hardy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if funny. we thought about it that much. I don't know. I mean, I, I think that... Um, we just, I don't know, Tom, what do you think? Just sort of did it. Uh, I think i think not like Simon and Garfunkel because, you know, with them, uh, Simon basically did everything and and Garfunkel was just a, a pretty voice. Um, but uh, I think we, you know, worked together quite a bit. You'd, you'd come to me with, you know, here's this song and let's let's put some harmony to it and uh, Seals and Crofts, Chris says, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do you guys uh, have any recordings of the two of you from back then? Uh, <laughs> funny you say this, because I, I will say that um, Tom sent me a recording that I had no recollection. <laughs> for, and there were songs on there that I, I honestly was thinking over the years, I thought, I wonder, I remember this snippet of a song. So Tom sent, sent this recording and you can tell that that exact same that thing went on that it, his song we come up with a guitar part or a lead or or my song he come up with an interesting harmony or uh so yeah it was i think it was very collaborative and there's that there's that recording and we, we have a recording we made in my kitchen which i think is probably lost forever um it's not do you have the kitchen? i have a recording of it yeah and I, i'm pretty sure tom did did we do that on reel to reel yes Yes, I I have sent in all of our reel to reels to be put onto a, a flash drive, um, and it should be coming in the next couple of weeks. So I was thinking that was that was where that was. Good. Yeah. I I know I have a recording of it on a cassette, which is you know yeah. pretty uh, uh, it's tinny sounding, yeah. but well that's uh, great. Yeah. yeah, the kitchen, my old kitchen in my house and your house too, probably, but it was like a great acoustic room. Mm -hmm. The house I grew up in, 100 and some years old. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we do. And we, you know, we've talked about with this technology, uh, we did do a little something. And uh, hopefully we'll do some more, like, uh, using the technology to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We'll have to... Uh... Well, when 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 you've uh, added the bass part, then we'll uh, we'll share that. All right. uh, we recorded recently uh, Harry Chapin's uh, song called "Circle," uh, that uh, we used to sing together, and uh, so one of these days we'll uh, we'll make that at least you know available to to this intimate group here. <laughs> well, good. We want to hear it. You, you could tack it on into this video, just, you know, like right at the very end of it. <laughs> well, we, we do need some B-roll, right? Yeah. <laughs> <We do. laughs> so. uh, All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Good luck. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Good chat. And, uh, Great seeing you. Thank you.
All my life's a circle Sunrise and sundown Moon rolls through the nighttime Till the daybreak comes around All my life's a circle I can't Season spinning round again, years keep rolling by. Seems like I've been here before, I can't remember when, but I've got this funny feeling that we'll be together again. No straight lines make up. My life and all my roads have bends. There's no clear cut beginning, but so far, no dead ends. All my life's a circle, sunrise and sundown. The moon rolls through the nighttime till the daybreak comes. Season's spinning round again The years keep rolling by I found you a thousand times I 
guess you've done the same Then we'll lose each other It's just like a children's game But as I see you here tonight The thought runs through my mind Our love is like a circle Let's go round one Spinning round again, the years keep rolling by. The years keep on rolling.